In this video, I want to talk briefly about exponential transformations. So I wrote out my basic exponential form, f of x equals b to the x. And then in each different color, I put a different type of transformation that might occur. So like we've talked about before, if there is a negative in the front of our function, it makes it reflect over the x-axis. The number that would be in front, that would come in front of our base, would be a vertical stretch or shrink, depending on the value of that number. So if the absolute value of a were greater than 1, it would stretch our function by a factor of a. And if it's a vertical shrink, if the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, so like 1 half, for example. If in our exponent we have a number added to the variable, so like x plus 2, for example, it would make it go to the left that many units, so like left 2. If it was x minus 2, it would make it go to the right that many units. So in an exponential function, our exponent is where something is grouped together, so that's what makes it go right or left. And remember, it's kind of the opposite of what we think. So positive goes left and negative goes right, like we've talked about before. And then if there's a number out back, not in the exponent, but just out behind the exponential part, if we add a number out back, it makes it go up that many units. And if it's subtracted, it goes down that many units. So let's look at a couple of examples. So I picked some out that were pretty simple to start with. So for example one, we have a basic growth function. We can tell because the base is greater than 1, and then it shifted up 4. In the second example, we have a basic decay function because the base was between 0 and 1, and then this one would shift to the right 3 because it's in the exponent. It's like it's grouped together, and then the negative makes it go to the right. For the third example, it has a negative in the front, so this one would reflect over the x-axis, and the base value of 2 would make this one a growth function. So I wrote those down ahead of time to make them nice and pretty. So again, that one would be growth and go up 4. This one would be decay and go to the right 3, and this one would reflect over the x-axis and be a growth function. And then I also drew out some graphs, so that way you could tell what they look like from the parent function. So in gray, I have graphed the parent function of y equals 2 to the x, which is our basic growth function. But then this one shifts up 4, so notice the whole graph just shifts up 4 units. So now my horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 4. That's the imaginary line it can't cross over. And then the y-intercept moved up 4 units as well, so now it's at 0, 5. In the second example, it's a decay function. So in gray, I drew the basic parent function for decay. And then I shifted it all to the right, 3 units, and drew that one in pink. So notice my horizontal asymptote is staying the same for this one at y equals 0, but my y-intercept did move up to 0, 8. And then in the third one, this shows you how it would reflect over the x-axis and how that would look. So in the gray, I have my basic parent function for growth, but then in pink, I reflected it over the x-axis. And then my y-intercept is at 0, negative 1 now, where it used to be at 0, positive 1. And then the horizontal asymptote would still be at y equals 0 for that one. So I just have a few more examples to show you. Like, what if we have more than one transformation at a time in our function? So for this first one, the one-half that's in the front would make this one have a vertical compression or shrink by a factor of one-half. The base value of 2 would mean that this one is a growth function, and then this one also shifted down 3. So I wrote all that down. In example 2, this one is a decay function because the base is less than 1. It would reflect over the x-axis because of that negative right out front, and the 2 would make it have a vertical stretch or expansion by a factor of 2, and then it also went down 4. So that one had a lot going on. So again, it was decay because of the base being less than 1, 
reflected because of the negative over the x-axis, and the negative is right out front. The vertical stretch came from the 2 out front, and then it went down 4. And one more. This one would be a decay function because the base value is less than 1 but greater than 0. In the exponent, it has a minus 1, so it would go to the right 1 unit, and then it went up 2 units. So I wrote all that down.